Get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. Get ready, get ready for a tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. Spilling all this hot tea on this podcast street. So get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. From tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. Hey, tea sippers. I hope everybody's doing good today. Happy Memorial Day. I am under the weather. I've been kind of sick um, with the cold and flu since about Friday, but today's Memorial Day and um, this weekend has been very interesting. I've been keeping up with all the tea while I've been in bed and I got my homegirl Emily here on the podcast. Emily. What's up, everybody? So we got a lot to get into today. Um, mm-hmm. so one of the main things we're going to start this podcast is talking about the Denea Jackson situation. So for y'all who don't know, Den- Denea Jackson is Derek Jackson's now ex-wife. And so she is finally speaking up about everything she went through in her marriage. She recently did a two-part interview series Um, with this podcast called Dear Future Wifey Podcast. And I watched the full two hours. It took me about two days, but I watched the full thing because I wanted to have context for everything. Mm -hmm. Now, like I've said before, when I talked about Derek Jackson, I didn't know who this man was. I had never heard of him until the Bonnet of Salvation drama. (laughs) Um, You know, I would see clips here and there, but I just, I'm not into any relationship gurus, financial gurus. Um, a lot of people on social media are full of shit. Yeah, and they're they are. really trying to pull on people's heartstrings to get money, to get support. And so a man talking in his car about what women need to do or what men need to do in relationships. And the fact that a majority of his audience had no idea that he was married or had children is really disturbing. Yeah, that's weird. Very, very weird. So what did you think about the interview? Like what what parts did you like? What parts made your ears perk up? Um, well, I will start out by saying in this interview, you know, she is a very beautiful woman. She is very beautiful. She's very intelligent. She's very well spoken. I really like the parts where she got into kind of like the biblical theology. She is very well versed on um, the Bible, very well educated. Uh, so I did enjoy that part. Um, my ears parked up a lot just by listening to, I mean, I guess we kind of know that song and dance, but there's, he's a fraud. He's a piece of shit. How he did her was so dirty. Nothing changes that, but I, I'm gonna just keep it real. There's something off with her, in my opinion, something about her just, I don't know if this is the right way to say it. something about her disturbs my spirit and I don't even know what it is, but she's off to me. Like there's something really, really off with her. And I know throughout the interviews, she said that, you know, she definitely battled depression, uh, postpartum depression, things like that. She's never been clinically diagnosed with any type of like mental disorder or anything like that. But there's Mm -hmm. something off with her for sure. Yeah. And what I want to do real quick is just play y'all this clip. This clip is the one that went viral. So we're going to go ahead and listen to this clip really quick. I became a shell of myself. I didn't know who I was. I actually have a couple posts on my page where I was like, I have a post that says, I knew her body better than I knew my own. Stop. Let that sit there. You said you knew another woman's body better than you knew your own. Yes, several, several women. I know several, I knew several other women's bodies better than I knew my own. And um, I spent a lot of time, like I was, I I went in such a a deep hole where I was like studying these women. I would go to their profiles and I would study their pages and like what they wear. I knew when they were meeting, when they had met up. So I watched their videos of them having sex. So I would try to imitate that. And recreate that in our relationships so that he could choose me and want me. All right. That's so, so y'all sad. just yeah, y'all just watched that clip. And this was my issue with the entire thing. I think Danea looked beautiful. I love the outfit, yeah. the suit, her hair, makeup. She looked really well put together. 
Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but when that clip first went viral, I had assumed this was while she's married. This was, you know, what led up to their breakup that she had recently found out that this man had been cheating on her after all these years and, you know, two, three children later. But when she's talking, if you watch the full interview, this was at the beginning of the courtship. Mm -hmm. That's the part that just kind of blew me away. Like she knew the type of man this man was when she met him in college. She was so boosted by the fact that this football player, this popular extrovert chose her. You know, and a lot of people felt like they weren't a match because she was quiet and she wasn't as quote unquote pretty and this and that. But she allowed this man to continuously cheat on her. You know what I'm saying? And then so much so that she internalized it and kept asking herself, what could she do better? She started studying these women, going to their profiles, trying to have sex in the same manner as these women. This was early on in the relationship. And I think that's what was so disturbing is that, you know, she was willing to put up with all of this for what? This yeah, man and then crash. Right, right. And at the end, even when, you know, the demise of their relationship and it came to them getting a divorce, he was the one who left her. Still, at the end of the day, she was not the one who put her foot down and was like, no, I'm not dealing with this. And I do want to say, I understand to a certain extent. Because I get how a lot of women, I'm imagining her in this, this situation, he's the breadwinner, they have kids together. I understand and I know a lot of people going through this right now, where they're in relationships that are not healthy, they're getting cheated on, they're getting treated like shit, and then everyone's like, why don't you leave, why don't you leave? And then the man just up and leaves and they're left with nothing. They have no financial stability, they have mm -hmm. uh, no resources, they're just like fucking left with debt you know, all kind of crazy shit. So I also think this is a great example on, you know, making sure that you're able to take care of yourself as well. But yeah, ba back to her though, I thought that was really interesting. And I also thought it was very interesting how her studying of these women and how obsessed she got with these women ended up affecting her relationship with her daughter because she said it looked like one of the women looked like her daughter and she couldn't yeah. bond with her daughter because her daughter looked kind of like that woman. I thought that was crazy. Yeah, that was. And, you know, the fact that she still caught herself trying to protect him, you know, even I believe it was a year ago when she was going off on everybody. You no, know, actually it wasn't a year ago. It was a few months ago when they went through their divorce mm -hmm. and she was laying curses on people. Yeah, bag bonds and all that. Yeah, and it's just like, I believe that, she was willing to put up with this nonsense because she was just as enticed with the lifestyle. Yeah. And as he started growing and the money started coming in, she was willing to put up with anything for that lifestyle. And I've said that before, like a lot of women will put up with certain things from a man, depending on what they're getting out of it too. Whereas if he oh, was yeah. broke or worked a regular nine to five, she probably would have left a lot sooner. But a lot of women feel like, you know what? I'd rather cry in a mansion and in a, and in a, and in a Bentley, as opposed to crying in a trailer park with a Ford truck outside. Right. Isn't that, wasn't that a future lyric? I don't know, Chad. Or a quote. <laughs> <laughs> you want, what was it? You want to cry in something or an Altima or some shit. And I'm like, well, quit hating on people with Altimas now. Ain't nothing wrong with the Altima. <laughs> no, that's right. But that's the vibe I get from her is that she was willing to put up with stuff for as long as she did once that lifestyle was rolling in. And, and one thing I will say about Danae is that she was very honest about oh, yeah. the parts where she failed, about the way that she allowed, you know, him to treat her. Um, she did take a lot of ownership, so she didn't just blame him. But Derek Jackson is a is a Derek Jackson is a classic case of, of uh, Derek Jackson is a classic narcissist. Yes. This a was one. Yeah. This was narcissistic abuse through and through. And I just feel like the fact that you still have women who follow this man is really disturbing. The fact that he still has female followers who still send him money and go to his speeches. It just goes to show you how desperate a lot of women out here are. That's why I say there's no loyalty with a lot of women. You know, all that sisterhood and we're sister. Mm -hmm. You know, these women knew that Derek was married and they didn't give a shit. They were willing to play the side chick and to play that role because they also wanted to have that proximity to him. 
Yeah, and a lot of people, <laughs> whenever she did come out with the, uh, fuck, what was it, the bonnet of salvation, a lot of people made excuses for him and attacked her and her appearance and the way that she looked. And it's like, I see why he cheats on it. Mine come to find, I mean, she's a beautiful woman, you know, but they blamed her for him being a piece of shit, which is absolutely ridiculous. And I do, I really did like the, the guy who did the interview because I felt like there was a lot of times where he kind of kept it real. He didn't really hold back. Like, I, what was she talking about? She got her phone cut off. And he's like, yeah. you know, he didn't say it like this, but he's like, how the fuck you get your phone cut off and y'all got Bentleys and mansions and shit? And she's like, well, we were in a financial crisis. Wh what do you mean? That makes no sense. Like, that's ridiculous. Or then when she was talking about the condo and he's like, that never like rang a bell to you. That never threw up any red flags that y'all live in a fucking mansion, but he has to do work in a condo. Mm -hmm. So I did really enjoy the interviewer and um, how he, he kept it real and kind of, you know, brought up very valid points. Like, girl, what were you thinking? Yeah, I think he did keep it real in certain aspects. The part that dis that kind of disturbed me, though, with the interview, it was way too much giggling. It, oh, it was yeah. that giggling and it was continuous from the first hour interview to the second that I think that <clears throat> I think that's what kind of disturbed me. And I guess maybe from her aspect, it might be a nervous reaction because sometimes when people are nervous, they kind of giggle and laugh as a yeah, do that. <clears throat> but I've never heard her laugh before, honestly. I mean, I don't really follow her, but I don't think I've ever heard her like actually laugh. That was probably the first time I've seen her just kind of like, and it was on very disturbing circumstances but yeah she was you know when she was talking about cursing people she was laughing she was kicking and, and getting her life yeah it was just way too much laughter i i just i can't get into people who laugh when they're talking about really disturbing toxic things yeah. i mean there was a lot of things that were very triggering that she was talking about in that interview and you know just the constant laughing and giggling that they were doing was just weird you know mm -hmm. the topic to me was a bit too serious for just the continuous laughing, you know, where it almost made it feel like, okay, well, are you even taking this seriously? Because you keep laughing. And meanwhile, I'm watching this with a straight face because I'm truly disturbed by the stuff that she's going through, you know? So that would be my only critique of the interviewer. Um, just the, the constant laughing was just a no go for me. But I think this is very telling. Um, I think this is very telling when I say that everything that glitters is not gold. Mm -hmm. A lot of people looked at him as, you know, boyfriend material, husband material. He's very handsome. He has a nice body. He works out. He's saying all the things that so many single women want to hear. He's calling out the fuck boys. He's holding black men accountable only to find out that, you know what I'm saying? He's not on, he's, he's one of the biggest fuck boys. Look yeah, how he's he, trash. He, yeah. Look how he's treating his own wife. And the fact that he has two daughters, you know, and the thing with men like him is they'll be the first ones to scream that, oh, no, man, better not treat my daughter like a princess. I got a shotgun waiting for any man. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to treat their daughters like gold. But the women who wore these daughters, they, they have no problem treating them like trash. Yeah, I think we all know that one person or several people. I've noticed this. There's always someone who's got really good advice, you know, and, and it's probably he has good advice because he's doing the shit that he knows you're not supposed to do. But we all know that one person that, you know, they, they might be in a relationship or they might have been married for a, a long time and they always want to give you relationship advice. Well, you're single because of this or, you know, if you would quit spending your money on this, this and this, then you could save up and blah, blah, blah. You know, when meanwhile, their financial situation shit. Their relationship behind the scenes is shit. There's always that person that is maybe good at giving advice. They just don't take their own advice and actually uh, use it in real life. And another thing I've noticed with men like him, mm -hmm. and I don't know if th this could be a fucked up thing to say, but have you ever noticed that narcissistic men, the women that they want to be with, they don't want them to be very, you know, um, not beautiful because she is beautiful, but they don't like them to be very uh, I can't outgoing. Think of the word. They want them very plain. I know what you're They're, saying. Yes. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. They very want them to be plain, very plain. plain. They want them to be kind of more wholesome. They. It's almost like they don't want them to get any attention. They want them quiet. They want them meek. They don't want a lot of people looking at them. They want mm -hmm. it to be all about them. Right. And it's very telling by the women that he cheated with. Because mm -hmm. all the, even the woman that he left her with, because remember, he filed for divorce, not her. 
That woman was crazy. like an IG, an IG thought, mm-hmm. you know, barely dressed, you know, the fake ass, fake tits. She looks nothing like the wife. So while he's telling women, y'all need to cover up and carry yourself. Respect like, yourself. Yeah, you know, re- like respectable women, look who he's actually running behind. And this is what I say a lot of times, too, that a lot of men will go off and be like, oh, all these IG thoughts, y'all need to stop getting BBLs and breast implants, and y'all need to just be natural and stop trying to be like these women on IG. But then I ask these same men, who do y'all follow? Do y'all follow the plain Jane women who just, you know, speak their truth and, you know, carry themselves well? Do y'all follow the women, you know, who are comfortable with just their natural bodies? Or is all of your followers chicks who've had their body done, faces done? Are they all Instagram models and OnlyFans? So that's Yeah, I mean, that's the hypocrisy that I see where, you know, they want this wholesome woman for the church and for their family. Mm-hmm. But behind the scenes, they're really lusting after those girls. Yeah, they're, they're treating the, the wholesome girl. one like shit, eating on her and doing all kind of fucked up shit to her, making her lose her mind. Meanwhile, like you said, who is he with now? Yeah. Yeah. And that's the part that's like just really sad, you know. But I do. I wish her the best, you know, with moving forward. But it's really crazy that he's the one who still had to leave her. I just find that just insane after she went through this for years. Because like I said, when I initially saw the viral clips, I had assumed this was like in the, you know, the last maybe year or two of their relationship from college. You know, they've been off and on. He's been cheating on her and dating other women behind her back. And so to put up with this for, I mean, close to 20 years is insane to me. Yeah. And unfortunately, this this really happens more times than not. And I'm not going to act like I'm better than, you know, I, I think, well, let me not just say everybody and cut myself out. But I personally, throughout my life, have I, I've done dumb shit. I've put up with shit that a lot of people you know, would probably deem girl, that's ridiculous. Don't put up with that, things like that. So I'm not going to try to be like, oh, you idiot, you know, blah, 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 that. But as I've gotten older and matured and and grown and learned, you know, just from life in general, I have noticed more so than the non that there are so many women, like I can think off the top of my head, at least five or six women that put up with just absolute fucking ridiculous shit, whether it's not, you know, them being the the sole provider, cheating, abuse, substance abuse, all kind of stuff. And I don't know if it's a self-esteem thing. I think that maybe at, at the core, because I know she had talked about, you know, she had went through a lot of trauma. She had daddy issues, things like that. But it's very, very common for that to happen, for women to just cling on to these men that ain't shit, like, for their lives, you know, even though they'll have kids, family, stuff like that. And that might not even be a financial situation because I know women out there that they're the ones going and work working while their husbands are laid up, not doing a damn thing all day. So mm-hmm. I, I don't know what it is, what's going on. Like I said, I think it could be a self-esteem thing, but I definitely do recommend that people kind of, you know, learn your self-worth, learn yourself and love yourself before you commit to loving to someone else. Because this is a, a perfect example of how low self-esteem, it, it completely ruined her self-respect, uh, her mental health, her emotional. I mean, she was she went through hell. Mm-hmm. I think at one point she was said she was even suicidal. Like there was a lot going on. And all this stemmed from a relationship. Yeah, she wanted to kill herself when the whole cheating scandal was exposed. And she had to sit there next to him and just play it off. You could just tell that she had nothing left. And a lot of women were taken up for her, as was I. But yeah. then she started attacking the same women that were taken up for her. You know, like I always say, there's never a test without a testimony. Yeah. And I believe that she was definitely in a spiritual battle. Derek Jackson is an energy vampire. Mm-hmm. That's just what he is. He knows what to say. He has that slick forked tongue, you know. And I just think it's just sad because... A lot of women, I to myself, you know, we've dealt with narcissists and, you know, people who just drain you and and take every bit of your essence. Um, And it tends to happen when you're younger and then you get to a point in, in your life, then you get to a stage in your life and you're just like, no, you find your self worth and you know what you will and won't accept from somebody. And I think part of it is society. Um, We have made women feel like you're nothing without a man. Oh, yeah. You know, you have to have a man. And there's nothing wrong with having a man. 
but what kind of man do you have? Do you have a good man? Is he a provider? Is he a good father? Or is he just like you said, somebody who just wants to lay around and play, you know, Xbox all day and sell weed out your, you know, out the driveway <laughs> and just doesn't have anything going for himself. And I think that's the problem is because everybody wants to say that they have a man. They want somebody in their bed that they're willing to take a piece of a man. And until we as women hold men to a higher standard, that is what you're going to continue to get is a piece of a man. Yep. You said it best. Yeah, so I just think the whole situation, like I said, is sad. I hope she gets it together. I hope she grows from this and she's able to show her daughters better. Because at the end of the day, he's always going to be a part of her life, right? Because they have children together. Mm -hmm. So hopefully she will break the cycle um, of narcissistic abuse. Hopefully their daughters will not choose the same man that their father was. But I just hope that this is a wake-up call to a lot of people to know that once again, everything that glitters is not gold. And, you know, while you might be in your situation struggling or being sad that you're single or don't have a man, I'm sorry, but I'd rather be single and carefree than deal with half the nonsense that I see women going through in this day and age. Right. I mean, she even said that she almost not even just that she almost died from malnutrition because she was so stressed and, and sickly mm -hmm. and depressed that she couldn't eat. So. Yeah, exactly. It's it's not it's not worth it. Don't ruin your whole life over a, a person that, you know, you think is so wonderful and so amazing and so much better than you. Because I've noticed that's a lot of times the mentality. Oh, this person's so much better than me. If I think something's good, but they think it's bad, then they just they're right and I'm wrong. And I need to retrain my brain to think like them because they're so amazing and I'm not. And that a lot, like I said, once again, a lot of that stems from um, low self-esteem. So yeah, don't I throw mean, your life away. Yeah. I mean, it definitely is. It comes back to self-esteem because again, like I said, even before they got married, she was accepting of that behavior. And that's one thing that young girls need to understand. Whatever you allow in a relationship, it's going to continue. So you better set your mm -hmm. standards as soon as that man comes to the door. If you're allowing him to have three sums and bring other people into the relationship, guess what? He's going to continue to do that. If you're cool with him, you know, having breaks when he feels like having breaks so he can go, you know, cheat and do him. He's going to continue that in that relationship. Uh, you know, and I, and I believe one of the things that affected her, like I said, she got caught up in the benefits of that celebrity lifestyle. You know, and a lot of yep. women get caught up in that. You know, now you're living this, like she said, I felt like a real housewife of Atlanta without being on television because he was buying her the bags, the shoes, the mansion and things like that. So again, all of that is material stuff. You can't take it to the grave at all. So would you rather live your life in a mansion in misery or have your peace of mind? And I think now she's choosing her peace of mind. I think that's worth more than anything material. Yep, very true. So now let's go ahead and segue. Um, we have another story that we want to cover today. If you guys do not know, there is a lot going on right now uh, with DJ Envy and a man named Caesar Pina. And basically, he is DJ Envy's partner. Um, there was a man named Tony the Closer. And so he broke this story. I first heard about it on Star in the Morning. He was not Star in the Morning. Um, the Star, the Troy Terrain. He's changed it. Star on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, he was one of the first people to talk about it this weekend. Um, a few of my subscribers on my Instagram page sent me links to Tony the Closer's video and his Instagram page. And basically, Tony was blasting. DJ Envy and this guy named Caesar Pina, um, who also goes by the name Flipping NJ. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, read to y'all this here. So Tony writes, breaking news, DJ Envy's partner Flipping NJ faces explosive allegations of scamming millions from investors. An investigation reveals a web of deceit leaving victims devastated. Will justice prevail? Stay tuned as the story unfolds. So he also provided receipt of somebody transferring money to Caesar Pina, and they gave him $95,500. Mm. 
And then um, once this was making its way on social media, DJ Envy ended up calling into his show and they kind of had a fallout. So we're going to go ahead and watch that right here. If he does, and I asked him personally, I said, do you owe people money? Does he owe you money? We have an investment together that we're going to sell. He does not owe me money. We partnered up on a property. He partnered up on a property. Property does he owe you money, DJ Envy? It's a school. Let me tell you. I, 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 you and I talked offline, DJ Envy. No, I'm gonna tell you 100%. No, I'm gonna tell you. You can't do that, DJ Envy. I'm gonna tell you the truth. You're gonna let me speak or we not. But no, the but we got is, to, if we're gonna tell the truth, we gotta tell, we the, gonna, truth, we gonna tell the truth. Now, 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 we're we, 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 we speaking the truth because I, I tell you everything. I talk to you offline. That's what I'm saying. I told you, me and Caesar, me and Caesar, we bought a school. That's the only outstanding deal that we have. That school never came back, and that school is not done yet. When I spoke to Caesar today, he told I told him I have a problem and he said I'm giving you your money back. That's it. So we don't have we don't have any dealings with each other. And I told and, and I even told you because when we had that conversation, I called him last night. I'm like, do you owe anybody money? Caesar told me no. He said there was people that we invested with that did well, and there was people that we didn't invest with that it takes a little longer. And I told him, nigga, whatever you need to do, give them people back their money. That's all, that's all it is. But when it comes to it, that's what it is. And he, and you Find somebody else that that will, will talk to you on live in a minute to talk to you about the real because I honestly but you, you can but ask you know people, listen, but you know you listen. know we talked offline though that's why I asked you the question and it's like you know we personally and, offline I mean I know you might be wanting to still not really draw your man under but like we talked offline and we we spoke online yesterday that's why I was kind of upset when you put out a, a picture of me because, and Caesar and DJ's every partner owes all this money and I'm like damn my nigga we spoke last night and I'm telling you I would tell you. But you know, I get it. My name on it is a little click. You get more clicks and all that. A thousand, a thousand percent it gets more cool, clicks. Man. But that, that's the same thing you do when you call out real estate investors, and then you do a real estate event. That's called marketing, right? You, that's what that, you that was part of your marketing. Event. Like we, you we, throwing, uh, you throwing somebody under the bus that fucks with you. That which is weird. But I don't care I, I, because it, I really didn't take it, nobody's money. And I just want to tell you the dude that you talked about that that allegedly owes a million dollars. I just got off the phone with him, and the first thing he said was, "You know, I did meet you when I went to the office, but." We never spoke. You just said hello and kept it moving. So, you know, I don't know why Tony would say that, you know, you you certified that deal or you made the deal comfortable. I'm like, nigga, we didn't even talk. If he walked past me now, I wouldn't even know who he was. I speak to anybody that comes to my office. But what I would like to do, I would like to get Caesar on there and y'all have a and y'all have a conversation and then you can ask him all the questions you need to ask him. So so you I asked you another question last night because okay. you, you were very direct about the fact that you wanted to distance yourself from from being involved in, 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 in any dealings that you didn't know about with Caesar and, and these investments. Uh, what what do you feel like you should do as far as your platform responsibility uh, with letting the people know that have invested with Caesar based off your likeness? Well, the, per, the, I tell everybody, no matter what you do when you invest, you make sure you do your homework when it comes to anything. That's why I tell everybody all the time. You make sure you do your homework. Uh, I do feel like you, you're saying Caesar's guilty before hearing his side of the, the, the coin which I think is kind of crazy. I mean, anybody can say anything they want, man. I just seen today that I owe people money. I just seen all types of shit. But the thing is, I think you should have that man on here to have a conversation and give his side of the story. There's two sides of the story. Well, there's actually three sides of the story, right? His side, his side, and then what's the truth? And I think before somebody starts saying that somebody owes somebody money or somebody doing something wrong and making an accusing and an accusation, I think you need to have him on there and, and, and clear his own name up. Well, well I think I think that's fair, but I also and I tried to talk, like, I tried to call you today with him on the phone, and you said you were you were clearly busy, so he's not. You know, you know we talk more. Don't don't try to flip the narrative on me because did that's I, did, bullshit. And did I, I, I really, did I not call you? I'm a really swing it because like I've been being nice and I've been trying to. You don't have to. Up. You don't have to be nice. Like, did you, I, did you I know, not call you, you this morning? But Tony, you, did I did I not call you? Said I call you thirty minutes. But you know, but you know, you bullshitting too, right? I'm a bullshit because the fact the fact of the matter is that you know that Caesar been doing bad business, and you just right now really trying to distance yourself because you don't want to be implicated with it. You know that he's been fucking people over. He fucked you over. He owes you money. You told me last night he owes you money. Like this ain't me making up shit. This ain't me just coming out and attacking anybody. This is real people. And no, this, 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 it's like even like your man, the credit dude, that was a part of y'all y'all whole situation, bro. He he he's out of one hundred and fifty thousand, and Nick was out here talking about committing suicide. See, see, you 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 can't play me like I'm the nigga that's just clout chasing or doing some bullshit. I'm really he, talking but, about people. Credit dude called me talking about he's in fear of his life. Like he like yo, I'm in fear. In my life and these niggas took my money i got i got seven or eight dms of people that's four or five hundred thousand dollars bro last night on the phone you told me yo this nigga owe me over half a million 
Don't do me now. You're going to try to get online and make me look like shit because then I'm going to come back with it. I'm going to come you, back you, with it. And this is the thing. You could come back with whatever you want. I'm going to come back with the smoke. I just got off the phone with you. I just got off the phone with you. Don't try to say you tried to you know, get your phone and none of that. I just you got off the phone with you. And you said you're making things up. I just got off the phone with him. There's no way that you're going to tell me. You on, are bro. clout chasing because Hold the main thing that you on, did was fuck up is you added my name. Listen, and that's what you not, did. You I'm added my me. name before you can't that tell me that you know he owe you money. But I you did the that. real thing and I came on here and spoke to you like a man. I didn't talk behind your back. And that's what real bro. niggas do. When we have a conversation bro, on. So or you, disagreement, but you been we have a conversation. Right All now. that other shit is out the window. And I'm trying to get Caesar on the phone because I called you earlier and I tried to get him on the phone with you. I didn't try to call you earlier when you said, yo, call me back in 30 minutes. And when you call me back, I tried to call you. Didn't you talk to me since then? And didn't I try to call him with you on the phone? And I, did I try to call him with you on the phone? Like Answer phone yes call. or no. Did don't I try like to call him with you on the phone? phone call, my nigga. You did, pull did, shit, yes, or, yes or no, I thought did you was say a that real nigga, nigga owe you money? Obviously you pull shit. Money I tried that. to be a real nigga and talk to you. Did you do this thing like anybody else? I salute you. I hope you get that nigga on the phone. And I hope y'all clear it up. And anybody, if he does owe you money, I hope that y'all get it. And I hope y'all get it straight. I'm going to do my best to make sure that if if there is a problem this, this, or issue, even though I'm not secure, involved, hey, you that right now, bro. Like, you, y'all have you a good one. Peace, man. Love you, bro. I love you. All right. Girl. Woo. Huh. That was a lot. Yeah. It's a lot to digest. Now, like I said, I didn't know who this Caesar Pina guy was. Um, but from what I research, it looks like he was very much on the Breakfast Club. He was being promoted heavily by DJ Envy. So, oh yeah, he's always standing next to him. Yeah, even when I went on his Instagram page, there's tons of pictures and posts with him and DJ Envy. I have the video of him. I'm gonna play a snippet of him on the on the Breakfast Club. We're gonna watch this real quick. We haven't been doing these seminars because so many times people come up to us and say, "How can I invest with you guys?" How can I learn more? How can I get in, in on some of your deals? So you came up with this idea. Yep. Break it down. So I think it's genius. I thought it was yeah. dope. Like you said at our seminars, people are always like, okay, what's the next step? How could I get in a deal with you guys? After our seminars, we never really had anything after the seminar because we wanted to do the right project, right? The right platform that we, because even with the seminars, when you think about our seminars, we it's almost like we're going back in time and saying to ourselves, when we first started in real estate, what was missing? What help did we need that nobody ever gave to us, mm -hmm. right? So same thing with this. Now we have a, a real estate membership platform, right? It's called Flip Number Two DAO, D-A-O. Mm -hmm. So Real Estate DAO is pretty much an educational platform where you're going to have the education part, our real estate network, and the most important questions are seminars. How could we co-invest in a deal with you guys? All right, so y'all just saw that video of DJ Envy um, talking to Cesar Pina on The Breakfast Club. So this situation is really serious. I have been following up with a few of Tony The Closer's videos. He's had people coming on there talking about how they were scammed for hundreds of thousands of dollars. A lot of people are blaming DJ Envy. From what I've researched so far, I don't see anybody who said that they've given the money to DJ Envy and he's the one who scammed them. I think the main issue is the fact that people were introduced to this man via a major platform like The Breakfast Club. And that's where people are trying to hold DJ Envy accountable. Yo, what's up? Hey, tea sippers To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.